Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to the Battle of Yiling Let's Talk Lore series as we continue with episode 4 titled The Fires of Yiling. Now the last episode ended as Liu Bei failed to bait Lu Xun's army out of his defensive positions at Xiaoting, and with the summer heat torturing his army, Liu Bei's forces had to move their camps farther inland, away from their naval forces as they took shelter from the scorching sun under the canopies of the forests. This created the perfect opportunity for the Wu counterattack as Lu Xun's patient defense for the last four months had already dulled the Shu Han morale, and with their camps now situated in the forest and away from their naval forces, they're primed for a fire attack. So in June of 222, Lu Xun, after reporting his intentions with Sun Quan, organized the Wu forces for their long-awaited counterattack. Leading the main force in a direct assault of Liu Bei's camp, Lu Xun's initial attack actually was beaten back as his earlier theories on the strength of Liu Bei's battle-tested troops proved correct. But in a second push, Lu Xun unleashed his secret weapon as Wu troops armed with nothing but torches and straws rushed in to light the wooden encampments of Shu Han ablaze. And with the summer heat and dense canopies, the flame pushed the Shu Han forces west, as they could do nothing but flee deeper into the mountain path. And such attacks would continue as the Wu naval forces soon sprung upon the Shu Han navy, as similar fire attacks continued on land as more than 40 Shu Han encampments burned down to dust that day. Finally, regrouping at Mount Ma'an, Liu Bei ordered his forces to take up defensive positions on the mountains. But due to the sheer exhaustion from the retreat and the casualties from the earlier attacks, the Shu Han army could no longer hold back the swarming Wu forces, as it soon became apparent that it was just going to be a matter of time before their defenses at Mount Ma'an would fall. As a matter of fact, this initial assault that had pushed Liu Bei back to Mount Ma'an had already decimated the Shu Han forces and in effect trapped them there. If we rewind back to the start of the attack, then we will see that the Wu vanguard forces of 5,000, led by Zhu Ran, broke through the Shu Han front line soon after the fire attack started as Zhu Ran's objective was to dash directly behind Liu Bei's forces to cut off their potential retreating path. At the same time, Pan Zhang stayed behind with the main force to eliminate any Shu Han forces that had remained behind, as not everyone was able to retreat west in time. And amongst those who could not retreat in time were Generals Feng Xi and the Five Valley Chieftain Sha Moke, who would die fighting Pan Zhang's forces. Meanwhile, Generals Du Lu and Liu Ning would lay down their arms and surrender to the Wu forces. And speaking of those who are left behind, General Zhang Nan, who was still south of the Yi River sieging Sun Huan at Yi Dao, had no chance as the Wu reinforcements soon arrived from the north, while Sun Huan mustered up his remaining forces to now trap Zhang Nan's forces in the field as they were quickly destroyed with Zhang Nan fighting to the death. Then after being besieged for four months, Sun Huan decided to take out his anger and frustration on Liu Bei himself as he then raced his forces directly to Mount Ma'an, hoping to get a piece of Liu Bei. All while this was happening on the south bank of the Yangtze River, forces were also moving on the north bank as a separate Wu force led by Zhuge Jin, Luo Tong, and Zhou Ying started to cut off Huang Quan's forces from rejoining Liu Bei's decimated army on the south bank. In the end, with no hope of reinforcing Liu Bei, or even having a clear path to retreat to Shu, Huang Quan decided to march his forces farther north to surrender directly to Cao Pi and the Kingdom of Wei, as he did not want to surrender to Wu. And that leaves Liu Bei all alone, trapped at Mount Ma'an, with Lu Xun's forces in the front, and Zhu Ran's forces circling behind. And knowing that remaining here would only bring a certain death, Liu Bei decided to use the cover of the night to escape, as General Fu Rong volunteered to stay behind as the rear guard to buy Liu Bei more time. And that night, as Liu Bei's forces attempted to break through the Wu encirclement, 
General Fu Rong launched a valiant last effort assault on Lu Xun's army in order to draw the attention of the Wu forces. Fu Rong's unit would fight until no one was left standing except Fu Rong himself, as Lu Xun asked him to surrender out of respect for his bravery and prowess. But Fu Rong cursed back, calling them the dogs of Wu, as he stated that a general of the Han will never surrender, as he continued to fight on until his dying breath. Unfortunately, Fu Rong's valiant last stand didn't allow Liu Bei to escape undisturbed, as not long after Liu Bei got out of Mount Ma'an, he would end up bumping into Sun Huan's forces at Mount Shimen, as Sun Huan had dashed here directly after taking down Zhang Nan, as he knew this was the most likely mountain path for Liu Bei to take on his escape back to the Shu lands. Thankfully, Sun Huan's forces were small, as Liu Bei's remaining army rushed forth to occupy Sun Huan, while Liu Bei scaled over Mount Shimen with what little remained of his army as they finally made it out of the Wu encirclement and the path forward back to Bai Di, or Yong'an as it was called during this time, was finally clear. Afterwards, Liu Bei would remark that he cannot believe that Sun Huan, who he had met in person before during his wedding to Lady Sun, had grown up so much as he was just a little boy the last time Liu Bei saw him. Even more unbelievable is how close he was at capturing Liu Bei, as Liu Bei lamented his own age of 62. Now, the entire retreat from Xiaoting back to Bai Di would take over 10 days for Liu Bei as his 50,000 Now, the entire retreat from Xiaoting back to Bai Di would take over 10 days for Liu Bei as his 50,000 army, including some of his most veteran troops, was now essentially completely lost. Only General Xiang Chong somehow was able to stop the Wu fire unit from lighting his encampment on fire and managed to make it back to Bai Di with his entire unit largely unharmed. Meanwhile, Generals Feng Xi, Zhang Nan, and Fu Rong are all dead, while General Huang Quan and his 10,000 man army had to surrender to Wei. Also, not only did the Five Valley Chieftain, Sha Moke, die, Ma Liang, who had remained in Wuling to act as a diplomat for Shu Han, also did not make it back safely, as the Wu commander, Bu Zhi, was able to cut him off and slay him. And for those who don't know, Ma Liang is one of five brothers from the famous Ma clan of the Jin province. He was a dear friend of Zhuge Liang and the older brother of Ma Su, as it was his death here that brought Zhuge Liang and Ma Su closer together, which would one day bring about the disaster during the first northern expedition. Now, just because Liu Bei managed to retreat back to Bai Di does not mean this campaign is now over, as the Wu forces barely took any casualties in this pursuit. While the victory was already grand, given the amount of Shu Han forces that were slain, and the sheer amount of supplies and ships that were also seized during this pursuit, Many of the Wu officers, including Pan Zhang and Xu Sheng, wanted to use this momentum to continue their push into the Shu Ba region while Liu Bei was still weak. And to find out why this never happened, come back next time, as we'll continue to discuss the aftermath of this campaign, all the way to Liu Bei's death in the following year. So hopefully you all enjoyed this episode enough to drop a like, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!